the rogue, George Sanders, who would later call himself Eugene Francois Vidocq is born in a prison cell. The twelfth child of a woman who steals a loaf of bread each time she needs shelter to give birth. As the boy grows into a man, he is constantly in and out of jail. As the story begins, he and his cut purse cellmate and associate, Emile Vanette, Akim Tamirov, escape using a file hidden in a birthday cake provided by Vanette's aunt Ernestine. Kassela Werbisek. While making their way to Paris, they are hired to pose for a painter, Fritz Lieber, Vidocq as St. George and Vanette as the dragon. As the church painting nears completion, the pair steal the horse on which Vidocq is posing. In Paris, Uncle Hugo, Vladimir Sokolov, the head of Vanette's criminal family, decides the safest place for the fugitives is in the army. He has a forger relative provide Vidocq with a fake commission as Lieutenant Russo. While in Marseille, waiting to ship out to serve in Napoleon's campaign in Egypt, Vidocq encounters a singer named Loretta. Carol Landis. She is intrigued with him. While he is more attracted to her Ruby Garter, accompanying her when she goes to meet her boring admirer Richard. Jean Lockhart. Vidocq manages to steal the garter. After two years, Vidocq and Vanette leave the army. Returning to Paris, they make a detour around the church adorned by their likenesses. They come across the jewel-laden Marquise de Piermont. Alma Kruger. Vidocq wrangles an invitation to her chateau after retrieving her pet monkey from a cemetery, where he also claims to be a relation of a Vidocq buried there. He is a bit alarmed when he discovers that his intended victim's son-in-law is the minister of police, Alan Napier, but also enchanted by the official's daughter Therese. Signa Hasso. Unbeknownst to him, she has fallen in love with the image of St. George, and is greatly disturbed by the painting's uncanny resemblance to their guest Vidocq and Vanette. Steal and hide the Marquise's jewels intending to return for them later. However, when the minister fires Richard, who is now his chief of police, for not recovering the jewels, Vidocq devises a much grander scheme. Through deduction, he leads the minister to the hiding place of the jewels, and wins for himself Richard's old job. In that capacity, he gets Vanette's entire band of criminal relatives hired at the Bank of Paris, which he intends to rob. A complication arises when he bumps into Loretta, who turns out to have married Richard. After learning his new identity, Loretta blackmails Vidocq into resuming their relationship. Vidocq tells Vanette to go ahead with the robbery that night. That day. He goes out walking with Therese and her younger sister Mimi. When they are alone, Therese informs him that she has figured out that he stole the jewels. However, she does not care. She is quite willing to follow him, even if it means embarking on a life of crime. Meanwhile, a jealous Richard bursts in on Loretta as his wife waits for Vidocq at a hat store. Richard threatens to kill himself. Instead, in a fit of anger brought on by Loretta's cold response, he shoots and kills her. With that impediment out of the way, Vidocq informs Vanette's family that he has changed his mind. He will hunt them down if they go through with the robbery. Nearly everyone is content with their new jobs at the bank, except Vanette, who ambushes his former friend, forcing Vidocq to kill him. Vidocq confesses his past crimes to the minister and the Marquise. Because he has truly repented and changed. He is forgiven by all of the de Piermonts and welcomed into the family as he marries Therese. 